Hey guys, so I played one rapid game this morning um, against a 1500 rated opponent and we get into the Vienna and he pulls out a funny line on me that I've never seen. So what I thought we'd do is just quickly go through the game because it's a good game. Uh, very, very wild, very, very sharp. Uh, could really have gone either way. And then look at the engine analysis and find out what the the best response is to this interesting new line and uh, so that I can add it to my notes learn and play better in future okay so I've got the white pieces and uh, we have e4 e5 and we play c3 now it's also worth adding that but my opponent said in the chat I'm also a Vienna player so he plays knight to f6 inviting the Vienna gambit f4 and he accepts the gambit. Okay, obviously I play e5 and his knight retreats. Now at this point, he's a pawn up, but this pawn is uh, hanging out to dry and I have a piece in the board and it's my turn. So I do have this advantage in development. Now, knight to f3 here is important, guarding that square from the queen. We don't want that. And now he plays this g5 which took me by surprise. Um, and this is the tricky one. So, <clears throat> clearly the pawn's defending this pawn against the bishop. So, you know, if I play, for example, d4, which is a very natural move, then normally this pawn would be then hanging, but now he's got this with g5 and also the threat of g4 hitting the knight. So, I play d4 anyway, and now he pushes g5. Four. And where's my knight going to go? Can't go there because of the queen. And can't go there because of the queen. Can't go there or there. So I've only got two options. Retreat to g1 or go on to d2. Now d2 has an issue. Blocks the queen's defense of this pawn and also blocks in this bishop. So I now retreat my knight all the way back to its starting point. And we already have a very, very interesting position. Right now, of course, my queen is attacking this pawn, but my knight has now abandoned f3 and therefore is no longer guarding h4. So we have queen h4 check. Very interesting. So there's only a couple of options here. Either the king has to move, or we play g3. Now the issue with g3 is f takes g3 and I can't recapture with this pawn because it hangs the rook. So I move my king now to e2. Now d6 is played, and I grab the, the grab the uh, the spare pawn with my light, dark square bishop. But my king's already off the mark; can't castle. Okay. Knight develops, and now my knight comes flying in to d5. Knight always loves to go to that square. It's attacking c7 with a potential fork on king and rook. So the king is now forced to move to d8. So now both of our kings have moved and no one's gonna castle in this game. <coughs> now, obviously my, um, now my bishop is defended there just by the knight, um, but what I, what I need to think about is maybe getting my king to safety. So maybe ideas of bringing the rook across and then the king scuttling away into the corner at this point. Um, G3 I think is also a, a very natural looking move at this point. Um, the queen has to defend this pawn against the knight. So the other knight now comes out. And now I push g3 to kick the queen back. And I'm thinking, are there maybe chances to trap this queen in the corner? We shall see. The queen retreats to h5. And now knight f6 hits the queen again. Now the queen moves across. And I decide to push uh, h3. The issue here is if pawn takes, I have bishop takes. Bishop's now on that long diagonal. The queen's under attack again, can't retreat down that diagonal, can't go there, can't go there. Um, the queen would only really have, can't go there because of the knight. The queen would only have one square. So the pawn can't really take now. So now he brings his queen out and I capture with my pawn. So h takes g4. This pawn is protected by my knight. So now the queen is forced to move. I think that's the only square available to the queen. 
And now I bring my bishop to h3. So one thing is we're trying to clear the back rank, trying to connect the rooks, bring the knight out. Um, but also we have two pieces attacking this pawn, which is uh, currently defended only by the knight. But the knight has a very nice outpost there on f6. Okay, now he comes off to the knight. So I decide, let's open things up in the middle. At least I have my queen in line with his king, okay? So I capture here on d6, saying if he wants to capture my knight, I could capture his knight with check, or I could play there with check. So he takes the pawn, and now we have this situation now. We have queen and bishop looking at this pawn, because my knight's been forced to move. Um, the queen's going to be defending this bishop against my knight. Okay, now he takes with check and... Obviously, this means that this knight is now undefended because it was only defended by the pawn. So I have to take the bishop. Queen takes, and now I move my king to f2. And now the knight is defended by my rook, at least. And it's attacking this bishop here. However, the bishop is also attacking this pawn, which is defended only by the queen. So bishop takes pawn, check. I block with my bishop now. Uh, and the queen now retreats to g5. Now, my first instinct was, oh, he's blundered his queen. But, of course, my bishop is pinned by his bishop. There, there is an option here of queen takes bishop, knight takes queen, bishop takes queen. But then the knight is now looking at this pawn. And um, he could simply take the pawn, attack my rook. And it just felt... A little bit dodgy here so I develop my final knight now to f3 now with a fork on the queen and the bishop the bishops defended only once right now but now I'm attacking it three times so what do you do as black you capture the bishop if he'd retreated the queen he'd have lost a piece okay so this is forced forcing move comes with check bishop takes attacking both queen and <coughs> king so queen takes is now forced as again. Queen takes and king takes. And now we are in a position. Very, very interesting. Okay, so I have three pawns and one on the king side. He has two pawns and three isolated. So in material terms, yes, he's a pawn up. But uh, three isolated pawns are going to be somewhat harder to protect. So now he comes out with check, and I advance my king. We're now in an ending. The queens have come off the board. Therefore, it makes sense to mobilize your king, centralize your king, and uh, start to make use of its powers. So here now the knight forks my knight and the c2 pawn. I have a couple of options, <coughs> and I decide to capture. Now I push c3, hitting the knight again. Knight retreats with check. King retreats to f3. Okay, now this does give the knight a couple of checking options. This one's no good because the pawn's guarding it. Uh, and he decides not to go not to go for that one, not to take his knight out to the towards the edge of the board. Knight's much stronger towards the center. And I centralize a rook to d1. He centralizes a rook. I come in and hit the rook, also hitting this pawn here. Rook retreats. Now at this point I could have captured the pawn, but I don't think I noticed that move. Instead, I lift my rook right up to h6. So ideas of if, if these knights move away, I've got two rooks now looking at this pawn on d6. Now he comes back with check, and I advance my king. He checks again, I advance my king again. Quite happy about this. All right, so he advances his king, I push a pawn. Now creating this barrier here that his king cannot get through. He pushes a5, I respond with a4. I don't want to, don't want these, this pawn encroaching too far. Brings his rook across to b8. Now I move my knight, bring me, bring it into the center of the board. And now we have two attackers on this pawn. So what does he do? He pushes the pawn. Okay, now my knight comes back again, two attackers on this pawn, defended only by the king. So what's he gonna do? He could retreat his knight to there to defend the pawn, or he could bring one of his rooks 
to the d8 square also to defend. Instead, he decides to push the pawn. Now that seems like a free pawn because I've got two attackers, so I capture the pawn. And now we are equal in material, four pawns each, very, very tight game. All right, now b5, a pawn break. Here, if I take, rook will recapture with check, and that's going to improve his rook and um, make it hard for my king to get into black side of the board. So I don't want to do that, but I have obviously a, a pawn fork here, which will win the knight. So I think at this point, my opponent just kind of lost his grip a little bit on the game. Failed to spot very, very obvious tactic with this shape. Pawn defended by that. It's also even defended by the, the knight, so the rook wasn't even needed. But he loses his knight here. Okay. <clears throat> and now I capture with the king. He takes. And now I fought king and rook. Grab the rook. Check. Check. Discovered check. King only has one square. I grab the pawn. And we find ourselves pretty quickly... Um, in a ladder mate situation. So rook drops back to defend this pawn. The king is currently uh, quarantined on the A file, pushes the A pawn. I push G4 with check, so this pawn is not uh, hanging at this point. King drops down, and now I simply move my rook across here. So we're looking at a simple ladder mate situation. He can take the pawn, doesn't matter what he does now. Check and checkmate. Okay, so, good game. Let me uh, have to scroll down, I think, to get the game report. Okay, All right, let's look at the game report. Let's see how well I played on that. So I think we're about 70 accuracy. Let the engine do its stuff. Okay, it seems to like white at the start of the game. That's good. Wow. <laughs> Look at that graph. Look at that graph. So I have, it seems like I've thrown away a couple of winning positions. Okay, my opponent played three blunders. I have seven mistakes though, and we each have a missed win. So let's go through this. Okay, it's got white completely winning at the end, obviously. But that is a, yeah, a wild game when you came out on top is absolutely the right um, interpretation. So there we go. Standard book moves. Takes is good. And I did say to him, why, why not d5? Because if he's a Vienna player, he should know that d5 is the best move for black here. But he takes. And I advance the pawn. And knight retreats, which is the best move. Okay, now. Knight to f3, best move, good. Okay, it kind of likes this now. d4 is the best move, good. And this is a good move, but it favoured white there. So let's look at the analysis. Okay, d5 is best. g4 is good, but then bishop c4. So it wants me, by the look of it, to give up my knight... Why bishop c4? Let's look at this. Bishop c4 is best. But now the bar's gone back to 0.5. Huh. Whereas this says 0.185. Go figure. Okay. So now let's see. So material, I'm a pawn down at this point. And it says d5 here is the best move. and then captures on person, then g takes. Hmm. And it's got us kind of equal. But I do have this development lead. Now I need to save my knight, I would say, oh, oh sorry, c, say, c takes d6 is a mistake. Okay, what, what's it saying? e takes d6. That's what I just played. Oh, g takes f3. Okay, all right, so it wasn't that. It says it should take my knight. 
but that's better now for white. And now I can castle. Really? This is madness. And then it says it doesn't like that. It says queen should have taken f3. Yeah, well, that kind of goes without saying, really. Because I've already got this bishop looking at the f7 square. Wow. Wild, wild game. Queen takes f3 is best. Bishop takes d6. Okay. And then castles. Okay, that kind of makes sense. And then it says it doesn't like it. It's made my position worse. But castles is best. Slightly better. Slightly better for white. This is, this is just funky. Let's go back to knight g1. Okay, so this was a mistake. Right. So it's saying here, <clears throat> bishop out. Bishop c4 is best. Okay, let's try and find the best moves. Let's say if pawn takes now. Seems to say white is slightly better. That's an inaccuracy. Should have played d5. And then queen takes. Is best. And I have a very good position now. Obviously, I mean, I've got three pieces developed. I've got two pawns in the center. This guy's hanging and black has no development whatsoever. Even though he's a piece up. He's far, far behind. So let's check this again. If the knight is attacked there, bishop c4. Just go full on balls out attack. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, let's try practice versus computer. And we'll take on, from this position, a an advanced bot, so let's try Antonio, 1500, right? That's the kind of thing I'm playing. So in fact, on the previous move, it was saying I should have brought my bishop out. That's interesting. Whereas I went for the center. Okay, so now let's see what Antonio does here. Mm-hmm. Bishop c4 is an inaccuracy. Bishop takes f4 is best. What? What? And this... Okay. Wow. Now I'm inclined to think d5 here. Hitting his knight, going for the center. <clears throat> Okay, you've taken my knight. I take knight. Queen takes f3 is best. Wow. Man, this is insane. I mean, I know the Vienna leads to insane sharp games, but this is something else. It said I should have taken the queen and given up the knight. It really wants that knight off the board, doesn't it? Okay, now he's attacking me. But it still likes white. Obviously, well, white's the only side with any development. I've got to defend this pawn, really. I've got to defend the queen, so surely queen e4. Okay, now it's got me one point up. Whoa. Crazy, crazy stuff. Well, I don't know what to take of it, make of all this. I'm a piece behind. I could castle now. Best, okay. Wow, wow, wow. Tempted to sack the rook for a knight and a pawn and have all the development. I'm tempted to do that. Let's see what it says. Inaccuracy. Knight b5. Knight b5 threatens this. Bishop's forced to take. And now it's completely winning because pawn takes with check. And now boom. It's a blunder. 
Oh, oh yeah, Lucy Queen, obviously, right, okay. Fair enough, fair enough, well spotted. Got to check there, but again, knight takes. But if knight takes there, queen here, king has to move to one of these two squares. Don't know about that. Not sure about that one. Um, I've got queen here, threatening the rook. There's no immediate danger here. He's got a queen and a knight. Um, this is just bonkers, isn't it? Well, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know how to how to play this situation if it happens again. It says bishop c4 is best here, but then it changed its mind. So bishop c4 on the previous move. Okay, let's try and remember this one. So bishop c4, let's try it from here. Okay, now he's attacking the knight, but now I can save my knight. Guess here. Mistake, it should have castled. It just wants that knight out of here, doesn't it? Castles is best. Wow, wow, wow. Then it doesn't want to take the knight. Okay, well, this is a really, really, um, really interesting position because what it's saying is d4, surely. Yeah. What it's saying is that the material here doesn't matter because white has such a strong advantage in terms of development and in terms of attacking opportunities. Okay, now it's completely winning. Completely winning. Okay, right then. This is going into my notes. But what? What a funky game. Obviously, queen can't take the pawn here because of... Uh, no, it's undefended on that square. So I should probably here take that. Ah, it's just... Queen takes f4 is best. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, so there you go. Very interesting game. If you like flying by the seat of your pants and getting to very dangerous and sharp positions, then please do try out the Vienna game. Um, um, still having heaps and heaps of fun with this. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, queen takes his best. Then I've got three attackers. Queen, bishop, and rook all against that square. Wow. Interesting stuff. Right. I'm going to update my notes. Hope you've picked up one or two things from this. Uh, thanks for watching. See you later.